Hi there. In the past few weeks, both the showrunner and representatives of HBO have given updated remarks on how many seasons they think House of the Dragon will run, is intended to run. I'm sorry I'm catching up on this. There was a lot of filming news coming out of Spain. I had to cover that first. I wanted to see what would happen. And actually, it was two interviews three weeks apart that first... Ryan Condal himself made some comments in an interview with IndieWire on May 2nd. And then Francesca Orsi, the head of HBO's drama department, made a really big interview with Deadline on May 26th. And when you put those two next to each other, you see the debate or the evolution of it. That we were really freaked out back in, around the premiere when in an interview Condal said... I think this show will run maybe three to four seasons, but we'll see what happens. And whereas other people just blindly accept that, I was going, if you're familiar with the source material, he's lowballing it. The fact that they would even consider three seasons is, is insane. That's silly. That I thought four was pretty low. I didn't think it would run like seven, but I was thinking five minimum, just based on the internal breaks in the story. Maybe four if you do it really well. And they have proven that, unlike the old showrunners, they can pack a lot in really efficiently because nothing is wasted because they're good writers. They can fit all the parts in. <sighs> then we got all freaked out a month before all of that, uh, before all these recent comments, when they announced that season two would have only eight episodes instead of ten. At the time, I jumped out and said, whereas other people are freaking out, I'm going... Guys, they must have pitched this as a three-act structure. Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, and Act 2 they loosely labeled Season 2. But there is no way you can tell the story of Act 2 in only ten episodes, so I said, what I think happened is that they hoped to get a supersized Season 2 of like 16 episodes after the hoped-for success of Season 1. And that after supersizing Act 2 to 16 episodes, they cut it in half, so we have Season 2A, is C or Season 2, of 8 episodes, and Season 2B, a.k.a. Season 3, another 8 episodes. And I said, my hope is, and at the time I was so convinced of this, that Act 3, which they also said, oh, maybe like another 10 episodes would also be supersized and split into two shorter seasons to get season four and season five. I was so convinced of that, made a big video about it, and that, you know, I sound confident in the videos, but then after I listen to myself, you know, in coming weeks, I go, am I just telling myself what I want to hear? That for, for so long, under Benioff and Weiss, We'd say, of course they're not really doing that to Stannis. Of course they'll introduce Jane Poole next year. How else would they fit in what Ramsay is doing? And we convince ourselves they're not going to do that. So uh, that's why I wasn't rushing to report on this. I thought, I'm just telling myself what I want to hear. Better to get more evidence first. And slowly the moral arc of the universe turned around, and they started saying things lining up with what I hoped for, that... Eventually, Condal gave a new interview where he said, well, he phrased it as, there need to be more than two seasons after season one. So he said, we can't do this in only three seasons. He said, first week of May. Then last week of May, the head of drama, she updated that. She upgraded it from, we definitely need more than three, to, she said, at least four seasons, maybe more. In as many words, she said that. At least four, maybe more, we'll see what happens. She did go into a little more detail. She said something like Condal and Martin were still discussing that, and it got interrupted by the writer's strike. That, like, when the strike happened, this was in flux, because you don't... I thought they had already planned out every season, but apparently just through season three, of, like, how long are you going to be committed to this or what, but... You have to read through the double talk. I don't know how much of this is true. Just that it was an ongoing discussion and we had to stop because of the writer's strike. Fair enough. So we're not really sure what's going on with that, but... I went from 
just from your end, you think I'm filled with boundless optimism. I was wallowing for a month and, oh God, I'm just telling myself what I want to hear. This is me talking myself out of that Stannis is really dead, the TV show really threw out a storyline all over again. To now, I am have cautious optimism that, yes, they re from their comments, it really seems like there is, they are openly talking about the chance of five seasons. Five act breaks. It, 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 like that. And I made a whole separate video to get everyone's attention of, there is an issue of what do they consider the ending. Because this has a direct sequel, the Aftermath era, the, the Regency era. And there's about four chapters on it in Fire and Blood, and you can just keep going on that later into the next guy's reign. Because it, it ends on a, it ends unresolved. There's the dragons haven't the the last dragons haven't died yet as of the end of Fire and Blood Part One. And they're setting up some rivalries, things are gonna happen. Still there's a question of when does Ryan Condal want to leave? Does he want to end with the story of Rhaenyra? Does he consider the hour of the wolf, the final act of the war? Does he not want to cover that himself, but he wants to hand it off to the next showrunner to make season one of a Regency show? Season one of the Aftermath show could be The Hour of the Wolf. Or it could be season five of this if he wants to stick around for it. I'm not really sure. But there's a debate about, you know, th this isn't as clear cut of, yup, this is the ending of, well, do I stick around for a sequel or not? And I've compared it to... It's kind of like we wanted Benioff and Weiss that if you only wanted to stay through the Red Wedding and then you phoned it in after that, you didn't want to do Feast for Crows book four, you should have handed it off to another showrunner. What if that's Condal's plan, that, okay, I'm here for the story of Rhaenyra, I don't intend to stay for the Aftermath Regency stuff, that's fine, and maybe his end point isn't what we assumed the end point was. Maybe he wants to focus on the story of Rhaenyra and not all the other plot threads. That, of course, would make a shorter show. That explains why we're getting lower numbers. Maybe the debate over, well, Condal and Martin are debating where to end it, is discussing, hey, Condal, do you want to stay to do the Hour of the Wolf season? Or will you be staying long enough? Should we look for another showrunner after that? Will you be doing Duncan Egg with Ira Parker by then as the Kevin Feige of this? I don't know. But cautious optimism. This isn't bad news. This is, they went from saying three to four and people seriously believing that just because they said it when like anyone familiar with the source material is going, that's, that's crazy. Anything less than five actually has us worried. To within one month, within May, first week Condal saying more than three to her saying at least four. I'm feeling good about this. It's a long article Orsi did, not just talking about Game of Thrones, but about all the other HBO projects. Uh, she mentioned a few other things briefly for the franchise, mostly just confirming things we already knew. That she mentioned, obviously, Duncan Egg, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, is on pause because of the writer's strike, but she confirmed what Martin already said, that their intention is to adapt the first three novellas that are in print, one novella per season. And they're shorter seasons, they're like six episode seasons. And then, apparently, they're just going to go on break. Because, again, Martin said there's supposed to be 12 novellas in all. He's nearly done with the fourth and fifth, but stopped working on them to do Winds of Winter, which everyone wants. And then, after that, he might even get to loosely cover the rest in Fire and Blood Part 2. But it, the 12 novellas are supposed to cover 50 years in the lives of these characters. There's going to be big time jumps in the later ones. So just do it like the, the British model of TV. Go on break for a couple of years. I Even like a five-year break, come back with new actors as, okay, I'm middle-aged dunk now. I'm in my 40s for when he's Lord Commander of the Kingsguard and stuff. I'm fine with that. that. Just, okay, adapt the first three, then see what happens. But Martin already said that. She's just confirming that is the plan. One thing she did point out, which is, again, just logical, is... Duncan Egg has a much smaller scope. It's these two characters. It doesn't have multiple POVs. Not to mention there really isn't much CGI. I mean, the dragons are dead. And it, not just that the dragons are dead. It's not the story of the first Blackfire Rebellion with full-scale battles. It's these two guys walking the earth and getting into adventures. That I think they might actually, once they get up and running, be able to crank out these three Duncan Egg seasons at a rate of one per year. 
Whereas House of the Dragon, the scale is so big, it's every year and a half is what they were going for. She didn't say that in as many words of, of annual, but she said it'll be a shorter turnaround time because the scale is smaller. I always thought that they wanted a show to alternate with House of the Dragon, but then again, this is a cinematic universe, the world of Westeros cinematic universe. Maybe after the first three Duncan Eggs, they'll switch off to like a, the Targaryen Conquest show that they're discussing. Maybe the reason they were discussing that is because th that's what they'll gear up as soon as the three Duncan Eggs are done in three calendar years. That kind of makes sense. So there was no bad news in this article. Of course, the one thing she pointed out, you keep hounding me with questions about the Jon Snow sequel thing. No, that hasn't been greenlit and there are no updates. That all of the clickbait things just came out of the woodwork. That's all they care about. And no, we have we have not we you would know if we had greenlit this. That it's offensive that they're ignoring. Obviously, it's big news, but they're ignoring Duncan Egg. They're ignoring House of the Dragon, and I know he was the big star of the other show. And like a lot of other channels, I'm I'm actually even interested in what Kit has to do because it's Kit's idea. They said. And he deserves to have the final take in the character. I see it much like Wolverine. That after Wolverine with Hugh Jackman got ruined in a couple of bad movies, they came back with, well, here's a different idea for a better Wolverine movie like Logan or something. And they tried it out. But it's, guys, it's not the book story of Jon Snow. But I want to give Kit Harrington because he, he suffered so much, the final say on that. But... She had no updates on Jon Snow, reiterated the Seven Kingdoms, uh, the Night of the Seven Kingdoms thing for Dunk. And I was worried I was telling myself what I wanted to hear uh, two months ago, going, no, no, they're splitting the seasons. Her saying at least four, maybe more, we'll see what happens, kind of reinforces these were three acts. Season one, which they said should have been 13 episodes, Martin said they wanted 13 was big enough that Act 1 should have been like 13 to 16 episodes. Act 2 should also be like 13 to 16 episodes. And then 4 to 5, like Season 5 might be only 6 episodes. If it's just about the Battle of the King's Road, then the Hour of the Wolf. And I'd be fine with that. It's an act break. Sometimes they're shorter and longer as the needs require. Uh, this isn't the only video I've made about this. this, is just the one directly addressing, I'm sorry I didn't get to this two weeks ago, I've been covering all the filming news coming out of Caceres in Spain. But I've made other videos that I'm going to link at the end of this, talking about, well, what storylines would be in Season 2 as a result of this. Um, what do they consider the ending? Please check those out, they're more detailed about these specific questions. I am curious about what exactly is the end point of Season 2, because we know Battle of Rook's Rest is the middle of Season 2. Is Battle by the Lakeshore going to be the finale? I don't think they can cover uh, the events at King's Landing in the finale, and the Battle of the Gullet is, must have been pushed to Season 3. At the beginning or end of Season 3, I'm, I'm not sure anymore. I used to think, well, of course it's going to be the end. Maybe they plan to put it at the beginning. Whatever. I don't really know what the end point of Season 2 will be, and that's the ongoing purpose of this channel, is when we get all of that filming news coming out of the UK next month, that um, last week of June, first week of July, they said there's a ton of battle filming and other sets and filming in Wales, in the UK. And we will be able to make a more accurate guess about what is included in the back half of Season 2 once we see that stuff. Anything I could tell you would be pure speculation. There's no evidence to support what is the end point for Season 2. This is one of our top questions, obviously, but I, I'm sorry I can't... Anything I tell you would just be... The hype channels would tell you, well, surely it must be this ending. I, I have to be humble and say I, I don't know how exactly they're breaking this up. I used to be so convinced Battle of the Gullet would be the end of Season 3. Maybe they're playing it differently than the way I would do it. But overall, good news all around... Um, there is serious talk in publications by the head of the drama department for we're discussing whether to have five seasons. Well, Succession was also discussing whether to have five seasons ultimately ended with season four. We just saw that, but it's not a pipe dream to say five seasons, whereas four months ago it, it basically was. And there is the question of if you intend to make Duncan Egg pretty much annually, and you could do that at the scale to smaller scale. 
are they, she briefly said there are other things like Young Corliss, Nymeria, which we're considering they weren't canceled. Uh, had other videos about this. So George R. R. Martin said they were, I'm still actively discussing Nymeria and Young Corliss with other writers. So there are scripts. She said in this that there aren't scripts. There are scripts. There's pilot scripts. We know that. I mean, they haven't been submitted, submitted. We, we are not sure. But this is a young cinematic universe that will slowly be branching out. And, of course, the brakes got slammed on it because of the writer's strike. But I think it'll come out of this harder and stronger. And it gives them more time to, you know, they're going, oh, well, we have to put pencils down. Behind the scenes, Martin and the others are probably chewing on and thinking, how are we going to plan this out as a cinematic universe on the scale of the next five to six years? So this was catch-up. Good news, I'm leaning towards five seasons, and if it turns out we're just debating whether to make the cutoff between this and the Aftermath show, okay.